Hey guys, it's Carlo from All You Can Board, dishing up another How to Play video. Today we're going to be looking at Spring Meadow, which is the final game in Uwe Rosenberg's uh, Polyomino Trilogy, um, the previous two being Cottage Garden and Indian Summer. This is a game for one to four players that takes about 15 minutes per player, and it's brought to you by Stronghold Games. In Spring Meadow, you're going to be looking to take tiles from this central board and fill up your own personal mountain board. Throughout the game, scoring rounds will trigger, Every time one of those triggers, we're going to count up uh, the player's points, and whoever has the most points at that time will earn one of these Edelweiss hiking pins. The first player to get two of those pins wins the game. Let me show you how to play. All right, so I've already gone ahead and set up the game. A um, couple things you want to note. This side of the board is for two or four player games. I've set up for a two player game. Uh, if you're ever playing the solo version or with three players, you would flip the board over onto the other side. So here we have the Edelweiss hiking pins, uh, which are awarded any time a player wins a scoring round. Uh, we've got our marmots, the signpost, um, and then here we've got our rocks, which are additional pieces that we can add to our board, which I'll explain later. And we have the compass, which serves as a placeholder on the board. Um, the other thing to note is each player gets one of these personal mountain boards. They have slight variations to them, but for the most part they're, they're supposed to be uh, more or less equally balanced. Um, if you're playing on a table with limited space or whatnot, you can flip it on this side and play from left to right rather than top to bottom. The next thing you're going to do is just make sure you fill each of these squares in this 5x5 grid with a single polyomino tile, so you'll have 25 of these on here. Next thing would be randomly determine a starting player. For the purpose of this how to play, I'll be the starting player. Uh, anyone who is not a starting player gets to start with these additional rock tiles as extra coverage. In a two-player game, the second player would start with a single rock tile. If you were playing with three players, the third player would start with a size two rock, second player would still start with a size one, and if you're playing with four players, that fourth player would start with a size three rock. And that's it. Now you're ready to play Spring Meadow. So before I show you how a turn works, I'd like to explain some of the placement rules, some of the things you can and can't do. So when you place a tile, it must go on your mountain player board immediately. You can't hold it for a future turn. Um, there's no restriction at first on where you can play it in terms of bottom, top. It doesn't have to be next to one of the other tiles. Uh, none of that is an issue. Um, you can use the hole from it to cover one of these burrows. Um, there's also a way that you can cover them up with uh, the part that doesn't have a hole, which I'll get to in a moment. Some of the ways that you cannot place your tiles, for example, you can't place one overlapping another one. So if I already had this, Let's say I added this tile later, I can't cover part of the tile with it now. Um, you also can't have tiles hanging off of your game board. It's also important to remember that once a tile has been placed on your board, it can never be moved for the rest of the game. And that's about it for the placement rules. So next up is the burrows that are on the personal mountain boards. These burrows are sort of restrictions that you're forced to build around. Um, there's only two ways that you can place tiles that would cover a burrow. So, for example, if I want to place a tile, one of these ones that has a hole like this, I can place the tile where the hole actually covers that burrow. That is now considered to be a cleared burrow. Um, just so you know, if I don't cover it, these count as covered spaces on their own. So you don't actually have to build over these spaces, um, but they provide you additional bonuses when you build over them, because in scoring rounds, every cleared burrow is worth an additional point. If ever I wanted to, let's say, place a tile in a way that it would have to cover one of the burrows without the hole revealing it and clearing it, I can only do that if I already have a cleared burrow elsewhere on the board, and then I would take one of these marmot tokens and place it over that other cleared burrow. Um, so anytime you want to cover up a burrow, you have to have a cleared one to make room for it. Now let me show you how a turn works in Spring Meadow. Uh, on your turn, you pick one tile from the row or column that corresponds to wherever this signpost is. So on the first turn of the game, I'm going to take one of these five tiles. Let's say I take this one here, and I'm going to place it on my personal mountain board. Then when I'm done, I'll move this signpost to the next spot. That signifies it's the end of my turn. Now it's player two's turn. So my opponent would go. Let's say they decide to take this one, and they'll place it here. And remember, since I mentioned before that they start with an additional uh, single tile rock since they were second, now is when they would place it on their first turn. Then their turn would be done. Now it would go back to me. So one thing you might notice is I can already see ahead these dots. One, two, three, four. Again, this is the board for two or four players. I can already see ahead that I'm going to go every time there's a one and a three. So I can start looking ahead and seeing which, uh, what options I'm going to have on future turns. 
let's say on my next turn I were to take this piece and put it here. So you remember before I mentioned that you can line up uh, or that you can cover these burrows with holes to clear them. There's another big advantage to the holes on these tiles though. Anytime you place a tile somewhere where you have a chain of more than one hole connected, that's how you get more of these rock tiles. So the way it works is, let's say I did this on my turn and placed this here, you count up the amount of holes that are connected, regardless of whether they have a cleared burrow or not, this one is three, you get a rock size one smaller than that. So I would get a size two rock. If I didn't want the size two rock, I can also take a size one rock instead. So you can always take, uh, take a smaller size rock if you don't want one of that size. This is crucial to getting additional points and having additional coverage because normally on your turn, you're only ever taking one tile from the board. So having these rocks or these holes connected to get rocks is a really big boost. The size one, two, and four rocks uh, are all kind of the same. Um, the size four is the biggest one you can get. So even if you have a chain of 12 holes all lined up, you can still always only take at most one size four rock. Uh, it's important to note that for the size three ones, you can either take this L-shaped one or the straight line. The game also comes with this useful little compass, which is basically just a placeholder so that if you're you know, if you want to take a tile off the board to see how it fits on your board, you would put the compass there to kind of reserve that spot so that when you go to put it back, you don't forget where your tile belonged. Uh, another difference when you play with one or three players, you can see that these uh, corners of the board look a little different than the two and four player side. That's because with one or three players, you also go diagonally. So the signpost will actually be on the corner and a player will pick from the diagonal uh, row. All right, so I've mentioned the scoring rounds a couple times. Let me explain how they actually trigger. So as this signpost moves around the board as our turns progress, there will be fewer and fewer tiles on the board. Um, the way that a scoring round triggers differs based on the number of players. Um, I'll start with a two-player game since that's what we have set up. As soon as the signpost lands on a row or column that has two or fewer tiles remaining, so zero, one, or two, we stop and that's when a scoring round would start. If you were playing with three or four players, it would be any time it lands on a row or column that has one tile or fewer. So again, zero or one. Whoever's turn it would have been, so for example, let's say I just took my turn and I moved the signpost and it was about to be my opponent's turn. For the scoring round, they'll start. These uh, Idlevice hiking pins on the other side have a plus two. This signifies you were the first one on the hike to get there and have a picnic. So this player would basically get a plus two to their scoring for this round then we would do our scoring based on the current state of our mountain boards to see who has more points. So in this game, you're always gonna count up points starting by from the bottom up. Um, you're gonna count your completed rows and then you stop scoring when you reach your first incomplete row. So for example, my opponent would score, these are 10 uh, spaces long, so this would be 10 points for this completed row. Then this row is missing one spot, so that's nine, so we're up to 19. Then you get an additional point for every cleared burrow, so 20, 21. Then they get the additional two points because it was they got the picnic tile here, so 23 points. Um, again, if they had filled in this one spot here, this would be another complete row, so that would be 20, and then we'd move up and start counting the next incomplete row. But as soon as you reach that incomplete row and you count those points, that's where you stop. Whichever player wins the round earns one of these Edelweiss hiking pins, but that player also must cover up all of their cleared burrows with these marmot tiles. Um, so basically, you won't be able to score the points for those cleared burrows again in the future, and a lot of the time it'll interrupt your uh, chain of holes reducing the amount of rocks that you'll get in the future. Once you've determined the winner of the scoring round, you'll take the box of polyomino tiles and you'll refill all the empty spaces, once again randomly, and then you'll just continue off with whoever's turn it should have been and you'll just go in clockwise fashion again until the next scoring round is triggered. Uh, the first player to get two pins wins the game. That's basically it. For more content on Spring Meadow, you can check out our written and video reviews. Keep an eye out for our upcoming solo how to play video. And if you want any other board game content, check us out on allyoucanboard.com. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out in any other various social media. Thanks for watching.